It is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on AM 1160 WCCS 101.1 FM. The county commissioners are with us. Last time we only had two because Commissioner Ruddick was on a secret mission, uh, but he's back with us here this morning. Covert operations. That's, yeah, what That's what it was. That's what it was. Well, good morning to you all. Good morning, Todd. And I think, Commissioner Baker, you're leading off. Well, thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. I just uh, we have a lot of things going on here in the in the county um, since we had an opportunity to speak to you last, and so I would just just like to begin by uh, talking about uh, a project that the county is undertaking right now. Uh, yesterday, uh, through the Office of Planning and Development, uh, we applied for a two hundred thousand dollar grant from the uh, Department of Community and Economic Development. Uh, to develop a multi-year uh, strategic financial management plan for the county. And uh, we're pretty confident that that application is going to be funded. It's going to help us to plan for the financial stability of the county by doing things like uh, helping us find ways to reduce spending, uh, identify ways to enhance uh, revenues, so, and support the long-term community and economic development, best management practices, and even some ways to work cooper- cooperatively with some other levels of government, uh, state and federal, and perhaps even uh, with other counties through cooperative purchase, purchasing and sharing of uh, resources and other methodologies. So mm-hmm. we're looking forward to developing a three- to five-year plan that will help us to uh, keep the county on a good financial, uh, stable basis. Is that a state grant you're going for? It's a D- DCED grant. DCED, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and, and obviously, when you decide to go after that, you probably have within your minds already uh, the sorts of things that you want that grant to cover. You'd have to have that in order just to get the paperwork filed. Uh, so uh, already the planning has begun for the planning. Well, you're right, Todd. In fact, uh, Baron Stauffer has taken the lead in uh, submitting the request, and he always uh, goes into detail uh, exactly what you're talking about sort of setting it up for us so that we know exactly how we're going to move forward. This is something that we have done in the past, but this is a more organized way of doing business and asking for outside uh, assistance and making sure we're doing all the right things financially. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that always impresses me about the job that a county commissioner takes on is that uh, you all come from various backgrounds. Some in some Mm -hmm. counties are are professional people who have done administrative type work all their lives. Others are not. Mm-hmm. They just don't have that experience. And yet you're expected to step in and be up and running right away with expertise on every issue. You need professional people to help you like this. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I would uh, just add, we, we've been really busy with uh, meetings over the last month, actually. Um, and we've been focusing a lot of our attention um, while we're talking about strategic planning for finances, we're also looking at strategic planning for what are the programs that we want to support and prioritize for Indiana County over the next four or five years. Mm-hmm. And so we have met uh, with a number of groups uh, to at least identify what those projects may look like so that we sit down and talk to our legislative leaders, our congressional leaders. We're all on the same page and we're all talking about the same focal issues. And we've put together, I think, a pretty a pretty nice list of targeted items that we've already uh, met uh, with um, Senator Toomey's office and talked about those priorities. And we're preparing now to go to Washington, D.C., um, uh, organized uh, through the chamber to meet with Congressman Schuster and talk about the priorities that, that we have. So... Uh, and that's a sensible way of doing business, and we've done that for years, and we always get the response from when we meet with those legislative leaders, thank you for having a common voice. Mm-hmm. And, and there's some projects I just thought I would uh, let the individuals of Indiana County know what, what we're looking at, and I have to be careful. For some of these are, are a little bit more detailed. I don't want to go into the detail, but I can tell you that uh, we have uh, some priorities that involve IUP, Uh, In some of their initiatives that they're looking at, maybe to increase their capability for federal training, which would encourage um, federal resources to come into Indiana County. So we're going to we're going to focus that as a as a key uh, objective for Indiana County. We're looking also at transportation. Obviously, you can't go to uh, Congressman Schuster's office without talking about transportation. He is the chairman of the Transportation Commission. He's the guy. And uh, committee. 
We still want to talk about 422. It's been on our hit list for years. Mm-hmm. The, fi- the funding for the project is not there. It needs to be there. Uh, the lifeblood for us to get to the uh, chemical petrol can- uh, plant in uh, Lawrence County uh, as part of that surge, we need to have that, that route opened up uh, into at least a three-lane and maybe four-lane. So we need to work on that particular project. We're also looking at the continuation of improving our infrastructure in Indiana County. And while that has been in the past water, sewer, and stormwater, we are continuing our effort (laughs) um, to talk about fiber optics for Indiana County. And it's amazing. Everyone we talk to would admit this is something that needs to be done, yet no one Mm -hmm. wants to take the leadership role at the state or the federal government to assist counties and states like Pennsylvania with rural connectivity to do something to get it done. And uh, I'm sure Shereen might mention a a meeting that we had also uh, regarding that very same topic. So we're hammering that issue out just about with everyone we talk to. And we're also talking about uh, what's happening with the uh, Central Allegheny Challenge Learning Center and uh, that expansion uh, in cooperation with Westmoreland Community College and IUP. Uh And the last item is an issue that our municipalities will have to deal with if, if it goes through, and certainly Indiana County will be hurt by it, and that is uh, federal government's position to do away with the community development block grant dollars. Mm-hmm. And this is a massive amount of money that's made available uh, to, to the states uh, that help municipalities move forward with some of the projects they can't otherwise afford. Yeah. Uh, so those are the issues on our plate. Uh, we're going to move forward on those and continue to uh, let Indiana County be the first on the list. So that's our plan. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a guy riding in an elevator over at IRMC one day last winter, and, and he said to me, uh, he was from Nevada, and he said, it amazes me, he says, that around here, he says, in all over this state, he says, you're still using telephone poles. <laughs> he says, we don't have those out there. Everything's underground now. Uh, and he said, I said, well, yes, we are, by golly. We're, we're, we're a bygone era. But we hope we're not too bygone. We're getting there. We're bypassed. Yeah. Shireen, yes. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And just to add to what Commissioners Baker and Roddick said, you know, I think the common theme is here, we are looking to the future. Yeah, we do this wonderful tradition and we have these wonderful um, you know, this wonderful past that we're building on. Um, and, and like um, Rod said, we did meet with folks about broadband. We've met with um, any number of people lately about how we look at Indiana County for the future. And one thing in particular is is the future of agriculture. And we've, we spoke with some federal um, representatives from rural development of the United States Department of Agriculture. We speak with our state agriculture folks and and I'm now um, happy to say I'm participating in a in a survey that's being developed by by Penn State Cooperative Extension and our and our local organizations for Western Pennsylvania about how to expand animal agriculture mm-hmm. in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, we want our ag uh, community, and I'm I'm on this advisory in this capacity as a you know an elected official. There are many many practitioners and and experts with technical assistance involved in that. But I think this is going to be uh, very meaningful for Indiana and the other other uh, counties surrounding. We want our farming community, our agricultural community, to know that their their leaders do really care about what happens in agriculture. Um, we we've got a great past, we're, and we're looking towards the future. You know, we and we are ready to take action. And we're you know just like everything else, we we are we don't work alone. We don't work in a vacuum. We work with every county around us, within the state, within the region, within the federal government as well. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, agriculture as an industry is so important to Pennsylvania, but it is shrinking. And it's awful difficult for a farmer to make a go of it. It really is. But there are new techniques in Mm -hmm. agriculture, and, and, uh, you know, we've got folks who are really (laughs) open to it and doing it here in Indiana County. We want to widen that, make that a a more broader uh, opportunity for other and, and new farmers, too. You know, I hear young people, and I see young people getting into farming. They have a different outlook on mm-hmm. farming, but we need that. We need those um, ideas and and the the um, the expertise from the folks who've been in it for decades and decades. Yeah, yeah. can't let that resource go away. No, it's yeah. it's part of our infrastructure. Really, mm-hmm. think oh, yeah. about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right.
One, one of the uh, uh, items I think maybe uh, Commissioner Baker can talk a little bit about with, with CYS, but I, I had the opportunity yesterday to spend the full day over at the CYS office with uh, Sarah Ross and all of the caseworkers uh, who were there. Went out on a couple of trips uh, with the caseworkers to at least get a feel for some of the dynamics they experience when they're out in the field, and, and that was quite a, an experience for me as well. And sat down and looked at the mammoth amount of paperwork <laughs> that needs to be followed um, to protect the rights of uh, our, our young kids who are abused. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm impressed by the people who work in that particular office. And uh, visiting that office uh, reminds me of how important it is to, to make a change to benefit those who really step step out uh, to reach out to those families in need. And and I know that we're working on a project, and I, I think Commissioner Baker probably has a little bit more detail on that than I have right now. Well, thanks, Rod. Yeah, I, um, I think uh, we kind of sometimes forget, we kind of undervalue or don't realize the, the uh, scope of the work and the dedication that our caseworkers and their supervisors and so on at CYS uh, put into their jobs. But I just want to make everyone aware that uh, we're, we're working on a plan uh, to relocate the Office of Children and Youth Services from its current building over on North 4th Street over to uh, uh, a facility that's owned by the Indiana uh, County Development Corporation on Indian Springs Road. Um, as you may know, um, the volume of services that are provided by CYS offices across the Commonwealth in recent uh, years has just increased astronomically and our agency here in Indiana County has truly outgrown its available space. And so uh, we have some loose ends to tie up on, on that particular uh, move. But uh, I would suspect that uh, after uh, ironing those things out, we'll be ready here in, uh, in late spring, perhaps a very early summer, to mm-hmm. move those offices to a place where it'll be more secure, there'll be more parking, more space, and uh, it'll just be a safer and better place for for our case workers and, and our staff to, to work. Yeah. Workers within that industry, and particularly in rural counties such as ours, it's an easy job to burn out on. Yeah. Uh, and we certainly don't want, yeah. want uh, those people to be lacking for resources. Well, we're about out of time here in this hour. Thank you so much, all, for coming in to visit with us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Todd. Much. And uh, we're going to have to get Byron in here very soon yeah. and, and talk about uh, some of the various issues that we've touched on here. If this you want morning. to talk to Byron about everything that he's doing, you better put an hour or something. <laughs> He's got a lot going on. That's a full plate, I guarantee you. I, I wrote to him a, or a week or so ago and I, I said, we really need to get you in here. And he said, yeah, uh, he's got a lot to cover. I'll he, he, and he's, he's in the process of covering it. It is Indiana in the morning presented as always by First Commonwealth Bank here on AM 1160 WCCS and 101.1 FM Fox News. Up next, Josh Woodison in the newsroom after that.